uh, we're going to be looking at the low single takedown out of soul size kata garyu. Interesting for a few reasons. It's the kata that soul Sai created himself. The only kata in Kyokushin that actually uses groundwork. Yeah, it's got the level changes. Yeah, it's got the level changes in it. Whereas other kata, you can extrapolate the bunkai, the, the applications to continue the techniques to the ground. But this one literally has the certain techniques in it which are clearly and specifically groundwork. The Garyu Kata. Now, like Mitch said, this card is interesting because it has level changes uh, which you don't see in other, at least in other Kyokushin Kata. I'm not familiar with all the Kata. Uh, and a lot of things you could argue, for example, out of Pinan 2, you could argue that this movement out of Pinan 2 is a kind of level change where you're coming, going down, blocking and taking out the, the knee. So you've got a push-pull going on there like that. And that's a very good takedown. The way God you works is it actually comes down into this position here like this. So in the kata, you come down, you block and you're here. And then from that position, you have the punch, but you also have the magic takedown. And this magic takedown, I say it's magic because it literally has an effect of being magic. It's so effective if you know how to do it correctly. But people get a little confused and there's just a few simple little rules. If you get those rules right, I guarantee it's about a 90% success rate that you'll get the takedown. That's how uh, important it is and valuable it is. One good important point here is in the kata, we have both feet on the ground in this way. As you get older, I'm, I've got no knee here, and the reason I'm not moving is because I can't. <laughs> but if you have knee trouble, there's no reason why you can't go like this when you practice the kata if you need to put the knee down. I always think it's funny when you watch American football uh, matches, and you see all the players on the side sitting like this yeah. because the knees there are 90 degrees. They don't have knee, they, they can't do any better than that. Really. That's it. Yeah, yeah their it's knees are in position for yes. it. Yeah. But in the cutter itself, it comes down into this position. One, two, turns again the other way. One, two, and this is where the takedown is. And uh, in the early days, the takedown actually saw them bringing the knee down. Okay, so I'll get Mitch to be my fall guy. Mitch is a really good fall guy because he always makes me look like I can do better than I really can. So now remember chapter 15, I'll move back, but chapter 15 of This Is Karate is the chapter on groundwork in Kyokushin. In advanced karate, when Sosai uh, explains the Garyu Kata, that's where you see the technique. And he literally uses this technique in, he demonstrates this technique in the book. I'm just going to open it here. So you see, this is explaining the technique in one form of the technique against, in this one, against a, a front kick. If you've ever watched Muay Thai, Oh, they'll catch the front kick with two hands. Okay, and this is the thing. They'll pull it in, bang it with elbows, or they'll do this double hand catch, pull it in, punch, pull it in, left hook, pull it in, or switch and take down. So that's a very common uh, control with that uh, against the front kick. Here, Solso works the idea that, and remember, Solso's experience in the street, on the, all that, was during a time in Japan where the grapplers dominated. There was absolutely no doubt that the grapplers dominated. And so it was not an une unexpected thing to end up on the ground. If the grapplers got you, bang, they throw you to the ground. So you had to deal with that situation. And this particular takedown is outstanding. 
uh, for that because it's an extremely, uh, extremely high percentage taken. So let's just look at the science of it first. If Mitch can stand up, the whole idea of it is if I trap the foot and push the knee approximately 45 degrees backwards, like that. It's very, yes, it's very hard. It doesn't take any pressure at all to compromise. If I trap the foot and push the knee 45 degrees inwards, it doesn't have the same effect. It's like trying to, you know, guys have very, very strong thigh kick blocks. So there's no uh, zero chance that I'm going to, even if he pushes in as I push on the inside, it collapses. Yeah, yeah you, you go. So the first rule of thumb is remember that when you do the technique, you trap the leg here, push the leg there. In Solsai's demonstration of it, it's like Solsai's hit the ground and they've thrown a kick at him. Boom! I'm going to block that kick and do the takedown. Oh. So high percentage, it's insane. Yes. Of course, the golden rule is block the kick. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to, that's why defense always matters, because if I don't block the kick, nothing else matters after that. The rule, we have a game that we play, I call chase the belt. It's a training drill that I developed to teach people how to block head kick strongly, even when your partner can't kick to the head. So if you have a partner who can kick to the head when you're standing, well then all power to you, you can practice those kicks. But, and Mitch can cut to the, uh, kick to the head, but let's say he couldn't. So what I do is I come to my knees and he throws the kick to my head there. See that? So now I can practice my head kicks as though I'm fighting someone with really flexible legs, okay? So this idea that I've landed, ended up on the ground and he's standing over me throwing the kick is very realistic. You know, it's kicks to the downed opponent in UFC and so on are illegal for a really good reason. They're very dangerous, okay? But if you control the leg, you can do really well. So the first rule of thumb, once again, the angle is important. Push from inside in 45 and trap the foot, okay? If Mitch starts to turn to avoid that pressure, I simply have to follow that angle, okay? So if you watch carefully here, I'll move right back so we don't... I'm pushing at this angle. Mitch turns and I keep pushing at that angle. And I keep working the angle towards 45 degrees backwards across his knee. Does that make sense? Yep. That's the first rule of thumb. The second rule of thumb is if I'm doing it in a, in a way that really has to be very successful, I need to get my head fairly low because I don't want to get punched in for a start. The other rule of thumb is, as I come in, I don't want that knee to knee me in the head, so I want to make sure that I don't have both hands down like this. Boom. So I come in with shikomashiuke, in the kata, it's shikomashiuke, and therefore when that knee comes in, boom, I block it right there. And that allows me, the knee comes in, I block the knee, and I, as he puts his knee down, watch, I'm going to leave the knee there. You're going to put the knee down. Boom. As he puts it down, I follow it straight back. So the knee comes up, I block it, cox comb, shikomashiuke, and as it goes back, I use key hands to it. My arm is on his knee, and as the knee goes back, I follow it back and lead straight into the kick, uh, the takedown. Okay? The next point to remember is so far so good. I've been taken down, I made a mistake. Now I have to make sure that I don't get kicked in the head. I've sorted that out. The next thing is to get the correct leverage. Okay, and like Archimedes said, you have a long enough lever you can move to the earth. I don't want to be here with my hand. That will pretty well be completely useless simply because Mitch has too much stability and too much strength in the leg. And if he lifts his heel off the ground, he can move the leg. So if I try to take him down, yeah. see that movement away with his foot? Once again, if I, if I really try to take him down, he can easily step off that because he has movement in his heel. 
Okay? So the magic thing is, even if I was one inch, for you guys born after a certain period, that's 2.54 centimetres, my friends. If I was 2.54 centimetres above his heel, that makes a difference. Even if I'm slightly above and I try to do it, he has the opportunity to get out. But if I can get my hand buried on the mat, so there's zero space between my hand and the mat. Now when I do and he tries to step out, it's infinitely more difficult. Not impossible, but much more difficult. Okay? So, I'm in this position here. Maybe I'm there and I've used this a thousand times in grappling and it's very successful. Because you can work, the, I, I know you can't see it in our head, but we're in this stand-up situation here. And immediately what I do is I drop down and bang, take the leg like that. And that allows me, that's a low single, that's a low single yeah. and this leg back here, remember in the kata, the back leg is off the ground. That's what gives you the drive. When I hit the low, the low single takedown, this leg driving here is, the, is what pushes me off and gets the drive. Okay? The next thing to remember about this is I want, I, I can push with my head on the inside and when I teach it to beginners, I teach them to get their head on the inside simply because you get better leverage. But as you get better, there's no reason why you can't go head on the outside because you capture their knee on the shoulder here like that. So if Mitch comes this side here, you'll see that if I can get my head on the inside, it's very difficult for him to escape the leg, especially with my hand down low on the mat. Okay, and I'll show you how he does escape in a sec. But if my head's on the outside, it doesn't matter as long as I engage my shoulder. See, my arm back here, with my head in play, I can take it down. I'm not talking about the danger of punches, I'm just talking about this principle of leverage. If my head's on the outside, I can't leave this arm behind now because the knee will slip off. So what I do is, I make sure that I wrap. So now, the knee can't slip off, okay? That's the key point to that. The next thing is the escape to it. Generally speaking, if he wants to escape, he's going to turn around. He's going to turn 180 degrees, and now I have no leverage, and he just runs out. Okay? So I come in, I'm looking for the technique, and he just turns and runs. Okay? And for a grappler, many grapplers, what they'll do is they'll actually spin right around and take it back. I'll be here, they'll spin right around and keep spinning and keep coming around there and, and the next thing you know you've exposed your back. I was recently in UK and I had uh, a couple of nice roles with Professor Lagato, one of the great teachers in UK and also Professor Braulio, a steamer, and I did this low single on both of them. Both of them defended it perfectly with that sort of uh, counter to take the back. And even Professor Legato said to me later, be careful you expose your back. Okay. So I came up <laughs> lying in bed at night. I came up with what I think is a possible and so far has proved quite successful way to counter that turn, and that's this. So as I come in, watch carefully my arm. I lie my arm along his foot and I hook the heel so if I turn around here I hook the heel there see that I hook the heel behind and I put my elbow on the mat even over his big toe once again let's turn around here so hook the hand and look my elbow actually comes over my forearm comes over the bone is on the outside of the toe but the muscle is on the top of the toe so now in that position if he tries to turn around it's much harder the reality is if i try to take down the defenses he will spin out of it and go yeah or he'll come right around and take on back okay the counter to that for me is i come down i may even hit the leg here slide all the way down and if you can see that I have my bone and elbow right here on the outside 
and the muscle, the, 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 the fat part of the arm over the toe. So it gives me maximal uh, contact. So now when I do it, if he tries to turn the foot, he actually can't turn the foot. Okay, and that's very interesting. Yeah, it's, okay. it's tight. Yeah. Yeah. So the fundamental Garyu approach is using the hands here. And it works a dream. We have the hand takedown, which works under certain circumstances. It particularly works when there's no weight on the leg. Okay, so if I come in, he goes back to the back leg, boom, you have it. As soon as it weights off the leg. But if he wedges in and realizes, boom, now that hand is going to be much harder. So that's where you come in with the shoulder. Okay, and the hand on the mat. That's the big difference. Another place that I've used it quite successfully, which kind of throws people and gets them off guard, is when I'm in this situation and they, they give me space, and then when they come in, once again, I'll hook the leg like that. It works better than you think if you've practiced it often enough. Because you obey the rule of the leverage, the angle. I want this foot hooking. See that foot hooks behind, and this foot pushes inside the knee. It works really well, and then what I'll do is, from that position, I'll feel them start to go, as if they're starting to go, I'll follow them up and grab the foot and come fast. I'm in this situation, I feel in danger, I keep my elbow and knee connected. See this, this elbow and knee connection is very valuable. And then from there, I'll hook the foot, push the knee, follow up and take the leg. If I can elevate the leg, I make it hard for him to escape his So, the Gadiu takedown, if you work on that, it works a dream. Can honestly, I've never failed to block a kick sitting, standing, laying down. If I don't catch it on the arms, I always manage to block with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, in that respect, Jed, I've got a 100% success rate. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's a simple rundown of that particular um, kick, uh, that, that particular takedown out of Garyu. Garyu is fascinating. It's Solsai's kata. And you know if Solsai is going to create a kata, that two-foot takedown was taught when he was in the services. A, that's insane. That's so good, Rob. But how good is it? And I'd say, Rob, in the services, those guys have got army boots on. You wouldn't just gently push the knee. I reckon you'd crack it as hard as you could. And, you know, the knee is very vulnerable in that position. Sure is. If you take it, it's a hinge joint. So you go outside the hinge the straight up and down. Yeah. It's in trouble. Indeed. And also, it only goes so far backwards. So if you're on the ground, I imagine, Rob, uh, you do like a, uh, a, a sidekick up into the knee joint straight on it's going to do some damage if it doesn't damage it will definitely take them down that's really interesting um you know and it's whole size kata the one that he created so you know that it's going to contain elements which he felt were important and elements which he would have tested at one uh, stage or another, Sun Seidu. I'm going to have to look that up, Mike, because as you know, I know nothing about Sun Seidu. <laughs> but anyway, the other thing too I think is interesting. I'll tell you a little story. I love these stories. Many years ago, I was on my way to the village that Solsai was born in, in Korea. Solsai's nephew, uh, Professor Choi, who was a professor of physics, a university professor of physics, was taking us to the village of Ilum. And finally, as a few hours drive out of Seoul, and as we're approaching the village, I could see the signs that were in Romanized letters as well as Korean um, Hangul. And it said Ilum. And then I had a flashback when I was a little boy growing up in Surface Paradise. There was a restaurant called Tianlum heavenly dragon and i remember garyu means reclining dragon and ilum i thought huh i wonder what that means and i remembered tianlum heavenly dragon ilum the lung part 
and Gaudiu. So I wrote the kanji for Gaudiu on a piece of paper and I showed Sosai's nephew. And I said, is that how you write Yilung, the village name? And he said, yes, right. And I had a, an epiphany, a, a light went on, because when Solso was a young man, he used to write certain commentary in the newspapers about current events in the martial arts or ideas that he had in the martial arts. Uh, and he used to use the pen name, Garyu, which means a reclining dragon. Also in Japanese, it has the meaning of somebody uh, who is... Staying in the background. Oh. Yeah. So it made sense that he used that. You know, it was like he was saying, well, I have this commentary, but I'm just going to keep my name in the background. But then we find out that that's actually the village that he grew up in. So he had a very strong sentimental connection to that village, and he kept that through his whole life, first of all by using the name Garyu, and then by naming his favourite kata Garyu. And... In the middle of the village is a hill, and that hill is called the Reclining Dragon, Yulung. The village is named after that, and it resembles a sleeping animal. Right? Right. And Solsai's parents' tomb is at the top of the hill. Wow. And so we went up to visit Solsai's parents' tomb. And uh, Professor Choi, Solsai's nephew, related a story how Solso, when he was a little boy, would go running down the path and he would yell at the top of his voice. He'd run, ah! And he said, wake, uh, reclining dragon, one day I'm going to wake you up and the whole world will know of you. And he said, and the old women of the village used to look at him and go, no, one day he's going to make so much noise that the whole world will know of him. Wow. Yeah, and there you have it. Many years later, of course, as we know, the rest is history about Solsai. Similar takedown, Sun Seiryu, yeah. The angle of the knee. Is that angle of the knee? Yes and no, not really. Um, not really, Mike, because the elbow is far, the arm is far more agile, so it's easy to get out of. There's no weight on it. The reason it works well on the leg is because gravity down means there's always a degree of weight on it. When they take the weight off, it's too late. Whereas with the arm, you can maintain. See, if you want to work the leg and there's weight on it, well, there's weight on it. If there's no weight on it, it means that they their balance is compromised. It means their weight's gone from two legs to one leg, so their balance is compromised. Whereas with an arm, they can have total control of their balance uh, and they uh, they can manipulate the arm and get it out. Especially when, when they're arm barring, if they just... Kind of play around with an armbar there, oh, yeah, God. yeah, like that. They start to put pressure on the armbar. All I have to do is turn my arm to to escape the armbar, or look my thumb down. I just turn the thumb up like that. So I do uchiuke, uh, and that that can relieve the uh, the arm block, you know. So there, like that. If I can pull my elbow into my body, it's hard to get that same angle. On an elbow lock, uh, Mac. So that takedown. Once again, let's just look at it quickly before we move on. So we have the cutter. The technique in the cutter comes down to here. Knife hand block that blocks the arm of the, the knee. Okay. You can even punch there before you punch into the groin as the knee comes in. Bang, crack, and then you go. Boom. And it's very, very. Uh, very easy takedown. The other thing too is if their weight comes into that, you can pick the foot up and look, because the weight's coming forward, boom, they go down very easily. That's the breakdown and application of that particular technique. Such a beautiful, practical technique. It's so interesting that he put a level change and some sort of ground aspect into the carter, because like you said, um, well, the carter, like, they arguably have it, but this definitely has it, which is really interesting. It's so interesting. Like Mitch says, you can see elements of the takedowns in other kata, but this one, there is really no other application for it other than a really nice takedown. So um, uh, that tells you a lot about Solsai's attitude towards the importance of not, ne not necessarily mastering the art of groundwork, 
but definitely dealing with a situation when you uh, when you end up on the ground. I know this is speculation, but how much do you think his practical experiences when he was doing the challenges play into him putting that in the water? Yeah, I think I think that's a really important point because he was a young man in you know the 40s and 50s. So that was a time when the judo guys really dominated in Japan. Judo was very strong. Uh, the tough, all the tough guys were doing judo, and so it was very real to think that if you got into some sort of uh, scrap, you'd end up on your back because the judo guys, once they got hold of you, would take you down. The answer to that is don't let the judo guys get hold of you. <laughs> you know, it's like. Uh, Gene LaBelle says, how would you beat Mike Tyson? Well, badminton or Cards. tennis, just <laughs> any way you want, just don't try and beat him at uh, boxing. No, I don't think it was his favourite kata as far as I know, Marco. As far as I know, his favourite kata was Sunshin, uh, Tensho. That's the one that he highlights. Of all the kata is the kata that you need to spend most time and energy on. Um, but it was obviously, it was the kata that he created, so it would have elements of his uh, movement philosophy, like fighting philosophy. Thanks, guys. Now, look, if you're not a uh, hit the subscription bell, hit that little, hit the subscribe and the bell. But the, the best thing anyone can do is just try to pass the word around. Mention it to your dojo mates uh, about the channel, and if they'd like to come along and, and join in, well, then it'll make a big difference. I hope that was useful. Um, thanks for joining in once again. And uh, good to see you, Jed. I look forward to catching up with you again real soon. Mitch, as always. Yes, thank you. I would have looked silly taking nothing down if you weren't here. So it's always good to have Mitch. But uh, thanks, guys, and look forward to seeing you again uh, next week. Thanks, guys. Looking forward to seeing you. Oos. Hope you enjoy that. Practice that technique. It works a dream. Oos. Thanks, Mitch. Thank you. Great to see you.